Who may ascend the mountain of God? Who may stand in that holy place? Those with clean hands and pure hearts, who have not given themselves to falsehood nor sworn deceitful oaths, they shall receive blessing from the Holy One and true justice from the saving, helping God. Psalm 24. Welcome to prayer today on Monday, the 4th of November. I'd like to read to you from For All the Saints. At this time of year, the church celebrates the feast of all saints and gathers up thanksgiving for the whole company of those who, in various and different ways, bore witness to Christ. Today, we extend our thanksgiving and include the saints of the Old Testament in our celebration of faith. The New Testament teaches us that Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, was, quote, born under the law of Moses, and thereby fulfilled the long history of God's covenant with Israel. For this reason, the church believes that he gathered into the kingdom of heaven all those Hebrew women and men who bore faithful and holy witness to God in the ages before his coming in great humility to redeem the whole world. The Eastern Orthodox tradition has always remembered this important truth and taken pains to commemorate the Old Testament saints in the liturgies. Local churches in the West have also done so since ancient times, and we claim this tradition of remembrance for our own church. Our faith did not begin with the birth of Christ in Bethlehem, but with Abraham and Sarah, with Moses and Miriam and Aaron, with Deborah and Samuel, with holy kings like David and Hezekiah, and with prophets like Elijah and Jeremiah. We give thanks for the testimony of their lives and celebrate their faith because they were the true forebearers of Christ who has made us partners and fellow heirs with them in the covenant of salvation. Let us pray. Almighty God, in the midst of your people Israel, you raised up many saints who through faith in your eternal covenant conquered kingdoms, did justice, and won strength out of weakness. Grant us to hold in glad remembrance their holy lives and fearless witness, that by your grace we may press on towards the goal for the prize of our heavenly calling through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, let our mouth proclaim your praise and your glory all the day long. You send forth your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. Glory to God, source of all being, eternal Word and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Psalm 37, appointed for today, verses 27 to 36. The righteous are always generous in their lending, and their children shall be a blessing. Turn from evil and do good, and dwell in the land forever. For the Lord loves justice. He does not forsake his faithful ones. They shall be kept safe forever, but the offspring of the wicked shall be destroyed. The righteous shall possess the land and dwell in it forever. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom, and their tongue speaks what is right. The law of their God is in their heart, and their footsteps shall not falter. The wicked spy upon the righteous and seek occasion to kill them. The Lord will not abandon them to their hand, nor let them be found guilty when brought to trial. Wait upon the Lord and keep his way. He will raise you up to possess the land, and when the wicked are cut off, you will see it. Let us pray. God, our strength, give us the humility to trust in your loving care 
and the patience to be faithful in seeking your kingdom, that we may come to share in the inheritance of your saints through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Glory to God, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, together as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading appointed today is Matthew chapter 22, verses 23 to 32. Here we see Jesus having a discussion with the Sadducees about the resurrection, and he speaks of the resurrection by quoting from Moses. This is an appropriate reading, of course, as we remember the saints of the Old Testament. You may not think of Saint Moses, but of course, Moses is a saint. Now to our reading. That same day, the Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to Jesus with a question. Rabbi, they said, Moses told us that if a man dies without having children, his brother must marry the widow and have children for him. Now, there were seven brothers among us. The first one married and died, and since he had no children, he left his wife to his brother. The same thing happened to the second and third brother, right on down to the seventh. Finally, the woman died. Now then, at the resurrection, whose wife will she be of the seven, since all of them were married to her? Jesus replied, You are in error, because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. At the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. But about the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what God said to you? I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Here's a little helpful note. Because the Sadducees accepted only the Pentateuch as God's divine word, the Pentateuch is the first five books of the Bible, Jesus answered the Sadducees from the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verse 6. God would not have said, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, if God thought of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob as dead. From God's perspective, they are alive. Jesus' use of the present tense pointed to the resurrection and the eternal life that all believers enjoy in him. Thanks be to God that God is the God of the living. And through the ministry, life, death, resurrection, and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, he grants to us, to all who believe, the gift of life everlasting, the gift of immortality. What a blessing, joy unspeakable. Thanks be to God. Now, friends, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Now as we turn to pray, let us offer our petitions to God on behalf of the church and the world all in need. O God of our salvation, guard and direct your church in the way of unity, service, and praise. This day, O Lord, we give thanks for the new priestly ministry of Reverend Ajit Verges. Bless him and his family on this journey, we ask. God, our strength, 
Together, hear our prayer. Grant all nations an awareness of the unity of the human family. Especially bring this realization, O Lord, upon all nations in conflict and grant them the courage to work for peace. God, our strength, hear our prayer. Cleanse our hearts of prejudice and selfishness and inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Lord, we pray for a peaceful election and outcome in the United States. God, our strength, hear our prayer. Teach us to use your creation for your greater praise so that all may share the good things you provide. God, our strength, hear our prayer. Strengthen all who give their energy or skill for the healing of those who are sick in body or in mind. God, our strength, hear our prayer. Set free all who are bound by fear and despair. We especially pray for those who struggle with mental illness and the affliction of depression. God, our strength, hear our prayer. Grant a peaceful end and eternal rest to all who are dying and your comfort to those who mourn. We especially pray for Irene Emig, for the Emig family as they mourn the recent passing of John Emig, faithful parishioner here years ago with St. Philip's, former cemetery board chair. Rest eternal grant to John, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon him. May his soul and the souls of all the departed rest in peace and rise in glory. God, our strength, hear our prayer. Gathering our prayers as Jesus taught us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, friends, the peace of God, which passes understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and fold you and yours this day and forevermore. Amen, amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Spirit kindle in us the fire of God's love. Amen. Have a blessed day today, Monday.